with what's been going on in this time frame in history. 2,000 years ago, we had Easter, and that's when Jesus got up out of the grave, right? Now, afterwards, Jesus appeared to <clears throat> several different groups of people, especially His disciples, and here, right before He is taken up into heaven, Jesus gives them the Great Commission. The commission is, is Him telling us what our mission is. And He was communicating it to us. He wants us to do this. Basically, it's just love. It's just love the world. That's all He's called us to do is to just love. It is very hard to love sometimes. Amen? Very hard to love. And as evidence in the world around us today, it seems as though there is less and less love um, in, for our neighbors, community, uh, just other people um, at large. Uh, it seems like love is something that has decreased as time has gone on. So here Jesus is appearing to uh, His disciples again to tell them this, and this is Acts 1.1. And this is Luke writing this. He says, In my former book, I, Theophilus, wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day He was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles He had chosen. It says, After His suffering, He showed Himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that He was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, He was eaten with them and He gave them this command. This is what he said. Do not leave Jerusalem. That was the place where they were at. That was where he was crucified. That was where he was resurrected. He appeared to them. And he said, don't leave. Stay right here. Wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you heard me speak about. He says, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked Him, they said, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Because the Jewish people, they believed that when the Messiah came, what He was going to do was not just give Israel what they needed and free them from the bondages of sin. They thought that He was going to come and set them back up as the rulers of the world. And that's what they were expecting. So when Jesus came and was teaching about love and forgiveness, it's like, this, this must not be the one we were looking for. We were wanting something else. Here these guys are still saying, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? Is that what we're waiting on? In verse 7, he said to them, he said, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by His own authority. So what this means is that there is going to be a day when God is going to use His authority and make some changes here on the planet. Okay, Right now we're living in the church age. We're living in the age where God has given His authority to, to men to speak His Word. We know that His Word is the only thing in this world that is a source of truth. And that source of truth tells people how they can be saved, how they can live forever, how they can overcome sin, and what caused that separation between them and God. Do you feel that? When you do bad, when you do wrong, when you sin, do you feel close to God or separated? You feel separated, right? Sin is a problem in this world. It's always going to be. It always has been. And that's where our free will takes us so often, is to sin. But y'all, Jesus came to defeat it. We don't got to live in the bondages of sin anymore. Jesus came so that we can be forgiven of that sin, free from that sin, and that was the freedom that He promised. Not to set up some kingdom or for people to rule. That's not what it's about. Jesus gave me and you, the freedom to love folks. You can love anybody you want to. You can. And y'all, let me tell you, let me say this, I'm going to say it about 18 times. 
God gave you the freedom to love. You have the freedom to love anybody. You can love anybody. Anybody. Are you loving everybody? I don't know that you can love anybody unless you love everybody. Ooh, that sounds like a t-shirt. Love from God, y'all, that's the most powerful thing. That is what got Jesus from heaven to earth. It's love. And love is what put Him on the cross. Love is what kept Him on the cross. And love is what got Him out of the grave. Love is what made him show up to these guys and say, I got a mission for you. Go love. That's all. What have you seen God do? What have you seen God do? I mean, we've all had some times in our lives where we were, we were like this with God Almighty, right? There was like a day of reckoning for all of us where, where we were... We were struggling with sin. And it was like it was overtaking us. We were just, you know, like prisoners or slaves in that moment to that sin and that temptation. And we were just not doing well. And then we remembered how much Jesus loved us when He spread out His arms and He laid on that cross. Jesus told His guys, He said, wait for the gift my Father has promised. He says, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Let me tell you about that power. In verse number 8, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus Christ said that, what kind of power do you think He was talking about here? Do you know what kind of power He was talking about here? This is the most, most powerful thing that you will ever witness. You'll ever see. You'll ever feel or experience. That power that God wants you to receive, it's the power to love somebody. You have the power to love somebody. Right now, there's somebody in your life that you don't love. I can promise you that. Because there ain't a person in here that loves everybody. Mm -hmm. Is that true or not? Is there somebody in there that really loves everybody? Or is there somebody that just kind of grates on you, like nails on a chalkboard? All right, and they're kind of hard. Hey, they, they may be one of your kids or uh, some of your kinfolks. They could be a co-worker or a classmate. Thank goodness school's almost over, right? Amen? No parents amen that? Y'all ain't ready for school to get out? What's up? You don't want to spend all day with them? Well, <laughs> Jesus says right here, you will receive power. He said, wait, and you will receive power. The power that He was promising these guys. Jesus' power... <clears throat> I believe that the power of Christ was found in His humility and His ability to love His enemies because it did not matter what anybody said or did to Jesus, He still looked at them and said, I forgive you. Father, forgive them. He still loved them no matter if it was the ones that was whipping Him or condemning Him or crying out for Him to be crucified. He still forgave them. And He showed us the power that we could receive. You have the power to love folks just like that. Now, I don't know, can you imagine being, like having your beard ripped out and thorns about that long pressed into your head and your flesh ripped from your body and you still found it in your heart some way to forgive and love that person that did that to you? That's tough, right? God's calling us not to do something that hard. He's calling us to love our neighbor and love God. 
And that's all. Isn't it? Isn't that the great commission? The greatest commandment was love your, your Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second commandment is, is, is like that. You love your neighbor as yourself. What that means is that love, agape love, is the, the source of it all. That's where the power comes from. He went on to say, he said, after this he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. So what did they do? They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. As you do. Because when Jesus left, they were watching and they decided to keep on watching. Wouldn't you? Y'all, they launching rockets from Amazon and people are standing there like this. For an hour or so. They just go up and then come back down. And people are like, wow. These guys saw Jesus go up and was hid from sight in the clouds and they were just, I guess we're just going to just wait here. Okay. That was the plan. He doesn't come back once. He's coming back again. They were fully convinced of that. Are you? So, they were standing there watching. And then the same guys that had to show up on Easter because people don't know where to look for Jesus, hmm? they had to come and give some directions. Y'all, this was the first Google Maps. It was two guys dressed in white. Did you know that? Patent pending, all right? They said, the two men dressed in white stood beside him and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who was taken, who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen Him go into heaven. So that is why Jesus told them what they were supposed to do. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and then you will be my witnesses. Pull up verse number 8, please, Miss Jody. You will be my witnesses. That's what Jesus said. You will be my witnesses. Jesus was telling them, when that day comes, you don't got to be looking up in the sky to wait for Him to come back. He's coming back. Just as sure as He did this time. And Jesus is going to bring with Him the power that He has promised us. That power to love. The power to be compassionate with people. Y'all, think about this. Jesus had, had compassion on people that He had never met. They were just like sheep without a shepherd. And He come along. He went to a well in a place where the Jewish people never went and, and ministered to a lady and led her to salvation. And that led to the whole community being saved. Jesus had the power to do that. He had the power to motivate people, to enable people, to be able to do things. You, you think about it. They were on the, the side of a lake, and it was like, well, it's supper time. What are we going to do? They just started handing out food. The basket never ran out. They were picking up scraps. Jesus had the power for all of that stuff. He had the power to not only help people that were in harm's way, but Jesus saw people, you know? He saw the worst of people. He saw the, the tax collectors, the, the prostitutes, the lepers, the people that were outsiders, the people that were marginalized, the ones that were put down, the ones that were always left out, the ones that were just eat up with disease. That was the people Jesus went and talked to. That was the people that were weak. And that was the people that needed power. And He took His power, His brand of power, and they were healed. They were made whole. All he did was love on them. That's all he did, really. They were wanting to condemn a lady in the street. Jesus drew a line in the sand. He's always fought for us, you know. He's always going to fight for us. <clears throat> He has the power to keep us from, from sin. To keep us from being selfish, you know? To help us to, to love the way that, that we should do. 
Um, if we love the way that we're supposed to, <coughs> it will build trust, it will build relationships, and hopefully it will make it to where the love of Christ can flow through us. Y'all, if, if you want to run um, water or electricity from one thing to another, you, sometimes you have to use a pipe or a conduit, and it travels along that. And that is all that God wants us to be, is just a conduit for His love. And if we would let Him love through us, let me tell you what that looks like. And it's weird too. You ready? All right. When, when we are not lovable, hmm, what does that look like? When you're not lovable, you're, you're grouchy, you're, you're, you're contrary, you're arguing about everything, you're in a bad mood, can't nobody tell you nothing, you're just, right? Ain't that the sound that you make when you feel like that? All the time. Jesus wants to love you, but very seldom <clears throat> when we are in that state do we talk to Jesus about, hey, I don't feel very lovable right now. Can you love me? We don't hardly do that much. But what God does is He sends people to love on you. You may have a spouse or somebody living with you or somebody that, that interacts with you or something like that, and God knows what you need. That person may not. And then all of a sudden, that person was obedient to the Lord, and you were having the worst of days, and then somebody loved on you, and you felt God's love through that person. And y'all, that's all that He's called us to do. Wherever you are, love whoever you're around. That's the Great Commission. He said, my power will come on you and you will be my witnesses. That's all. Just tell what you know. Tell what you've seen. Tell what you felt. Have you heard anybody else's testimony? You could share that. It's good to share that, yeah? Enough goes on. We start seeing more the power of God because we're focused on it. You know, we're paying attention to it. Some of y'all don't realize you got dandruff. But if it's brought to your attention, I promise you're going to start seeing it more and more and more. Some of you have dandruff and you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to do nothing about it. You just wear white shirts. You can have a better life. I'm going to tell you, you can have a better life. When you know what the problem is, you can deal with the problem, right? If you're not experiencing joy, that is directly related to the amount of love that you're receiving. I'm going to tell you, there's times in my life when I have shut out the love of God. I want to testify to y'all, because that's what the, the Scripture says to do. Be my witnesses. The more unlovable you are, the, the more of a mood you're in, the, the, the sassier you get, all right? You are just becoming an instrument for the devil. That's all it is. Hard-headedness, all of these things. I got a strong backbone. Shut up. All right? It's just, it's argumentative is what it is, okay? Do you think God called us to be uh, resolute and fuss with everybody? No. He called us to love. It would be a lot easier for us to go outside and just stand and stare into the sky and wait, wouldn't it? It would be a lot easier that way. But you got to do stuff. You got to be in the world without being of it. So check this out. In the world that you're in nowadays, you never know who's going to shoot you. There is not much love going around in the world today. Y'all, I found myself being in the Sylacauga, Alabama, in a and in, in just going in stores, and I'm like, oh, um, you know, bumping into folks because I'm clumsy and wide. So I'm like, somebody could just shoot me. 
from just bumping into them. I mean, that's the world we're living in now. It's not love. It's just not love anymore. It's not love. It is hate. The world, y'all, we are responsible for this. It's our fault. This is our world that we're living in. This is our time. And love is at the, the least amount that it's ever been. It's our fault. We're not loving. we got to love more. That's what we are witnesses of. Have you seen God love on you? Have you seen God love on somebody else? Have you seen God forgive somebody? They didn't deserve it, did they? But they were forgiven. You think about the person that is the most unlovable person in your life. God loves them just as much as He loves you. He'll forgive them as much as He forgave you. And He wants to love all of us. What's keeping you from love? It's got to be sin. Sin is the opposite of love. Jesus said, my power is coming on you. And then you will be my witnesses. Several years ago, there was an event, I guess you could say, a revival that takes place in somebody's heart. Sometimes they get called to do something. Sometimes they get set aside. Sometimes they just, they just can't stand it. When you got saved by Jesus Christ and He washed your sins away from you, could you shut up about it? Because you had been changed. You had witnessed a miracle. A miracle had been wrought in your life. You saw it. You felt it. <sighs> Tell somebody about it. You couldn't stop, could you? And it wore off after a while. You, you, you stopped talking about it as much. I get it. That excitement level, it wanes after a while because the world don't let up. Just don't let up. Jesus has never stopped loving us. He's never stopped fighting for us. And He's always going to be. As bad as I mess up on a daily basis, He still takes us back. You know, every single day, Jim, as, as bad as you can mess up in a day, at the end of that day, it's over. You know? As much as you can mess up in that whole day, there's an end to it. And then if He wakes you up the next day, you get to start over. If you failed at today, if you failed at yesterday, Okay, okay. Let's just stop doing that. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit and you will see what God is trying to show you. Be witnesses of that and testify about it. Sometimes fear keeps us from sharing. Sometimes fear can keep us from, from uh, reaching out to people, you know. Um, sometimes you go to talk to folks and it, it creates like uh, anxiety and stuff like that and you don't know what to say or what to do and stuff like that. When the Holy Spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit, He talks through you and He, he guides you to do things that you don't know how to do or that you didn't even understand. And all He's doing is loving through you. I think Agape love is so misunderstood. All right? I want to explain this right quick and then, and then I'll close. Agape love is the love that God has for us. Okay? In our natural state, agape love is a very rare thing to see. Okay? You might experience it some with your parents when you're young because they, they have that kind of love that God would have for a human being. That kind of, I'll give everything for you kind of love. Okay? But most of the time, it is a brotherly love. It is a, a, it's what they call philios love. It's where we get Philadelphia, you know, the city of brotherly love. And that's the kind of love that humans have for one another. Unless it is erotic, the eros love. And that's where it's like just, you know, touchy-feely, kissy-huggy. All right? And that's a whole different kind of love. All right? So you got that kind of love that humans are obsessed with from teen years 
till they die. Then you got brotherly love, and that's good neighbors. Oh, that's a good man. That's a good man right there. That's a good man. That's a good man. That's a good woman. I won't leave nobody out. That's a good woman. I don't know why people squat like that when they say that. But The agape love is the love that loves the unlovable, loves the, the hateful, loves the sinner, you know, loves the one that is, is not lovely. That's agape love. And y'all, that's hard. That's hard to love the enemy, you know? To love somebody that, that don't love you, that's hard. When's the last time you prayed for the president and his, and his whole cabinet, you know? And we're told to in the Bible. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta let God give me the power to love Joe Biden. Right? Because we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, but he's still a human being and he is he is my leader, elected leader, supposedly, so I gotta pray for him. Right? I mean, ain't it all just we don't know? I don't know. I just pulled on my ears. All right. Anyway. It's a lot more it's a lot more satisfying at the end of the day when we allow God to 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 open up our hearts to be able to see somebody's soul and say that is a soul that God created that is going to either live forever or die forever and I'm in an opportunity that I know who this person is and I can pray for them. God help me to love them. Help me to pray for them with with some real care. Like I really want to see somebody changed and saved. And it's not just a novelty prayer, you know? If you want to see something change in your life, you have the power to see it change. You got the power to pray for it to change. Or you don't have that power. Have you got it? He said to wait and you'll get it. These guys went back to the same upper room and waited on Jesus. The same one where they had the Last Supper. The same one where Jesus washed their feet. That's where they were. And what did He tell them when He washed their feet? If I, your Lord and teacher, are doing this for you, then how much more so should you do this for others? He was giving them the Great Commission there, wasn't He? They were back in the same place. And here Jesus was telling them, wait, receive the Spirit, and then be my witnesses. And you start right here. And then you just spread out. And all he said to do was love. Today, church, we are two weeks away from VBS. We are right in the middle of a, a summer summertime starting. School's getting out. A lot of people moving around, doing a lot of different stuff. Let's make sure that love is at the center of all of it. Okay. Every kid that comes in for VBS, every 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 person that we see at from Wind Creek, uh, not the casino, the uh, um, the state park, everybody we see, we just love on everybody. All right. If you if you're down at the casino, just love on them people too. All right. I don't know what they do down there. I want to invite you though. This morning, if you need to receive power from God, ask Him for it. All right, let's all stand. Let's take this time to pray and let's receive from God what we.